What's happening, family? Listen, I wanted to drop this video real quick and discuss the narcissist soft discard. But first, if you're new here, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so y'all can get the upcoming videos. But I feel like this video is going to help so many of y'all, especially if you're new into the situation and you don't really know if you're dealing with the narcissist or not. And it'll also kind of explain how the narcissist is able to get away with a lot of their behaviors without a lot of people being able to pick up and detect on um, who they actually are. So what the soft discard of the narcissist is, is basically when they discard you, but they discard you on good terms. So a lot of us know that a lot of us are coming from the intimate partner situation. So a lot of us were in relationships with them, but I was able to see this in several different ways in the relationship that I was in with the narcissist. So first I saw it the very first time that I actually saw it, she had a certain select group of friends that when I first met her, she brought them around because they didn't really know her that well. And they just knew her like really on that superficial level. So she used them to make it seem like she was just, you know, she had normal friends and everything was cool. And you know what I'm saying? So she, she basically used them to make it seem like she was personable and she was likable and she had a big group of friends. And this set of friends was like a set of friends from high school that I guess that they didn't really know her that well. They didn't hang around her that often. So they didn't know her like, super close like some of her other friends like that she used for flying monkeys later on um they actually like so the flying monkeys weren't really in the mix at this time so uh, she used these friends to basically bring me around and just seem normal and like i said just make it seem as if she had a strong friendship group and a, and a strong support network <clears throat> so once their job was done once they came in and they showed me that oh, okay this person has friends she is personable she's outgoing she does this she does that and she has this uh, select group of friends then I never saw those friends again and every once in a while I would ask about them and it was kind of like oh we haven't talked in a while and I didn't really pick up on the fact that okay that's because their job was done and had I picked up on that when, you know, I first got involved with the narcissist, then maybe I would have caught that as a red flag. But it was kind of like, you know, and they kind of mask it as just the hustle and bustle of life. And so then it happened twice to me. So if you guys understand any anything about my situation, I've explained it in several different videos, but what ended up happening was I was in a cycle of on again, off again, on again, off again. And then there was like a third time around where we were on again. And then there was a child produced out of the third go round. So I didn't understand narcissism at the time. I didn't understand that I was being discarded at the time. And this is how a lot of people, um, will get caught up in the cycle because they don't understand what they're actually dealing with. And the narcissist ex is extremely good at hiding, especially at the beginning, especially when they want to keep you on the hook for whatever the case it is. So what ended up happening was she would, she came around the first time we had a, you know, we, we courted for about a year and everything was smooth. Everything was cool. We had a great time. The love bomb was cool. All of that kind of stuff. And we just, you know what I'm saying? It was like we were building a friendship and we were at the, we were at the stage where I wasn't expecting much of her and she wasn't really uh, showing me that she was expecting much of me at that time. So because we weren't really expecting too much of each other. And I wasn't expecting her to, you know, actually step up to the plate and do anything at that time. We were actually just establishing the friendship. So it was kind of like normal at that time. But what ended up happening was everything was cool for about a year, year and a half. 
she was always around me, always up under me for like a year, year and a half. And then all of a sudden she just disappeared. And it wasn't like a, you know, uh, a bad breakup or like we, she basically left everything on good terms. Everything was left pretty much right where it was. So we were like still cool. We were still, you know, um, sexually involved and all of that kind of stuff. And so she just left it right then and there. So this is kind of like a warning sign for you guys that are involved right now. And you don't know if you're dealing with the narcissist or whatever the case may be. When people just disappear out of your life, and then pop back into your life and you don't question it, like that's, you know, that's a, a setup for failure. That's basically you you setting yourself up to be extremely hurt and abused later on down the line. And that's one of the things that, that's one of the mistakes that I made. I, you know, I thought that me and this person was so cool that even if they were, you know, dating other people or doing X, Y, and Z elsewhere when we weren't dealing with with each other. I thought that it was a, still a certain level of like decorum, like how you how you carry yourself, and you know um, a certain level of respect just for the friendship that she and I had. And so on my end of it, I was still actually you know respecting her, even though like I said, you know when we were in those on again off again situations i dated other people and all of that kind of stuff as well it wasn't like um you know like i said we were just friends at that time the very the, the first go round, we were literally just friends and it was just like one of those situations where we were friends and then it developed into the friends with benefits thing and we were kicking it for like i said about a year and a half i actually started you know um liking her then as far as you know, maybe pursuing something later on down the line. And it was just that the fake fairy tale, the story that she basically told me. And then the way that the story kind of lined up with our real life, that it could have actually been something that was like our, our story should be amazing. It, you know what I'm saying? But the way that it turned out, it turned into a complete nightmare, but our story would have been extremely amazing had it worked out um, the way that it was supposed to, I guess. But I guess um, everything works out the way that it is supposed to. So, um, you know, basically I have to look at it and follow God's plan on this. But basically what ended up happening was, like I said, she was around and everything was cool for a year, year and a half. And then I guess her cycle was up. It wasn't like I went through a hard devaluing stage. She didn't talk crazy to me. She didn't, you know, start really abusing me or anything like that. It was just like she just disappeared. And then when I kind of asked about it, it was just like the, oh, well, you know, life and, you know, things kind of happen and all of that kind of stuff. And like I said, I wasn't expecting a lot at that time. So I just kind of took it for what it was, kept it moving and just left it like, okay, well, we still on good terms. So, you know, maybe she'll pop back into the picture and maybe, you know what I'm saying, it'll work out later on. So it kind of left me on the hook for the second Hoover, like the, the second go round. So I was already prepared for the Hoover. If y'all don't, uh, you know, I, I hope y'all understanding what I'm saying right now. It's like they're all, like the first time was like a grooming session. It's like she probably, you know, well, I ain't even gonna say probably, she most likely had a whole nother supply in the mix and she was trying to triangulate and trying to groom me at that time. And it was real just casual. It just seemed like, oh yeah, we just gonna be friends and you know, we just cool. And I kind of went for it because like I said, we had history prior to all of this. So um, it just opened me up for that second Hoover basically. <clears throat> and I didn't realize that I was being Hoover, but basically, uh, a year, year and a half, she was up under me all the time, and then she just disappeared. I didn't hear from her for six, eight months, maybe, maybe a year. And then when she came back around, it was like she came back around, and it was like nothing ever happened. You know, it was always just like that, okay. And so the second time she came back around, she didn't even really have to hoover that hard because like I said, she left on such good terms the very first time that 
it was just like, okay, well, you know, we kind of just picked up where we left off. It was kind of just like, okay, we, we still kicking it. Um, are you dating anybody right now? She's like, oh, no, I'm not dating anybody. And and I'm like the same thing. Like, well, you know, I was talking to somebody, but I kind of got out of that situation. It is what it is. So, you know, what's up? And, you know, it was just almost like picked up right where we left off. And that's where the narcissist, when they talk about the garage, the harem garage, that's where the narcissist really wants to keep everybody at. And the whole thing about it is if they could keep up the facade, that's where I would still be. You know what I'm saying? Like, and a lot of us would still be in a situation. But the fact of the matter is they burn out. And once they burn out and that mask comes off, then they have to show the real them. And then it's over with. You know what I'm saying? So basically what ended up happening was so... You got to also understand how life was going at this time as well. So the very first time she came into the mix, I was maybe, I was in my 20s, but I was maybe in my mid to late 20s. I would say anywhere, somewhere between 26 and 28. So the second time she popped back into the mix, now I'm in my early 30s. I'm maybe 32, 33, something like that. And I'm starting to kind of figure life out and figure out what I want to do in life, that kind of thing. I'm still, you know, kind of on the fence as far as career. If, if I want to stay in the same field that I'm in, if I want to switch, and I've always had a real strong entrepreneurial spirit. So I was thinking, you know, maybe I want to, you know, take my chances on my own and all of that kind of stuff. And I had, I had actually started doing a lot of stuff on my own. So I had started a nonprofit organization. So those of you guys that are um, new here and you don't know, I do have a nonprofit organization, which is still active now in the Washington, D.C. Uh, metropolitan area, like the DMV. And basically, we um, the name is Relentless Society Foundation. You guys can follow us um, on Instagram at r underscore society underscore r underscore life. I know it's a lot of underscores, but as soon as you put r underscore society, you'll sh you should see the heart with the RS that I usually wear on my shirt. It's in blue um, and you can find the link there. And we are Relentless Society as well on Facebook. And we also have a website, www.relentlesssociety.org. So you guys can um, follow me on there and see what we got going on in the community. We do a lot of things uh, for the homeless and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and we are looking to continue to grow. But that's another thing that I want to, it's a, that, that kind of ties into the purpose of this channel and the purpose, uh, the spiritual purpose that's in my life and the walk that I've always been walking with God. And, and I wanted to just kind of share my story and share my experience with you guys, but I'm going to get right back onto the topic because I don't want to, you know, I don't want this video to be too long, but basically what ended up happening was, so I went through, I came around and like I said, the second time around, now I'm getting a little bit older. I'm a little bit more mature. I am now looking for a little bit more in my life. And I think she knew that. So what ended up happening was the love bomb was intensified a little bit. So every time I had mentioned this in another video, so every time that she would come back around, she would pop back into the picture and the love bomb would be that much more strong. And it would be like, um, now she knew me a little bit and she knew my likes. So she knew kind of like, okay, I know he likes this. I know he likes that. I can use this against him. And then she just turned that up. Like, so everything that she was doing, she just intensified it. So that second time around, it was like, damn, okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm really feeling the situation. Okay. Now I'm getting older and I'm thinking, okay, she's, she's older or well, she's getting older. She's actually a year older than I am. So it's like, she's, she's getting older. I'm getting older. And we've always had a cool relationship. So it's like, okay, well, why not pursue that? And that's where they want you to be. They they want you to think like that. <clears throat> and that's basically where I was. She had me in that situation where I was like, okay, cool. Um, I'm not dealing with nobody right now. I don't see anything else that has the potential that this relationship had because she was mirroring me and everything seemed so good and so cool and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm like, well, 
you know, she, um, she seems to just fit the situation right now. So I'm like, okay, well, let's try it again. And that's again. So I, the, the warning that I'm trying to give you guys is when people pop out of your life and then they pop back in and you don't ask no questions where they've been, what you doing. And I know some of that is like, you don't want to be asked no whole lot of questions either. So it's like, well, y'all kind of just think that you're going to respect each other's boundaries and things like that. But the thing about it is you may be able to, uh, on your side of things because you kept things respectful on your side. You know what I'm saying? You kept things. You may have dated somebody, and then even then it was kind of kept respectful. You know, it was done respectfully. The narcissists don't move like that. You know what I'm saying? So on their side, they was trifling. They was they was being trifling the whole time. You know what I'm saying? They was being trifling when they was dealing with you the first time, but they was being extremely trifling while they was gone. And now they're coming back because, like, if she didn't... It, this is what I want y'all to understand as well. If she had moved on and found something better, then she wouldn't have had no need to come back the second time and the third time. These people don't move on and find better. They just try to, they move on and, you know, they make a lot of dumb decisions and who knows what the reasoning for is <clears throat> that they move on. But at the end of the day, a lot of times and most of the time they're looking to come back. And if you're still in that position and I was, I was still in a position of like, I still cared for, her, I still found her attractive and we didn't leave on bad terms the first two times around. So she had me right where she wanted me at. Now what ended up happening was, and she probably would have still, you know, played that same position and, and kept that same cycle going. The only thing is, this time we had a child out of the situation. So she ended up getting pregnant. And when those stresses add into the situation, the narcissist don't know how to react to uh, different types of stresses and things like that. So she, it's like she went out of her way to get pregnant. And, and what I believe, especially now, is she knew that she was cycling out with me again. She And I believe that she understood that if the cycle goes dead again, because I had already been through it twice with her, regardless of whether it would have ended on good terms or bad terms. Now, and like I said, I, um, going back to the third time now, I'm in my late 30s. So now I'm like 36, 37, 38 ish. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm like looking to really settle down and I'm like, um, you know, I'm I'm really looking for my partner at this point, and I'm thinking that okay, this person has the potential to be that because she's always we've always had a cool relationship. We've always been, you know, um, we've always seemed compatible in that in that area. So because I felt like we were compatible, and I didn't understand mirroring, I didn't understand, um, you know, manipulation like the way that the narcissists use it or sociopaths, psychopaths. I didn't understand how they use manip manip <clears throat> excuse me, manipulation to uh, take control of you and basically try to control your mind. I didn't understand how sociopaths and psychopaths moved at that time. Now I got a clear understanding of, of what goes on because I had to deal with it and I had to deal with the I, I learned actually from experience. Like I didn't um, you know, I, the YouTube channel, like the YouTube uh, videos that I watched confirmed what I had already witnessed myself and what I had already known. But basically, I saw it for myself firsthand. And that's why I'm able to come here and discuss the stuff with you guys. <clears throat> so, excuse me, guys. Um, so basically, the third time around, that like I said, now the stakes have risen. Now the stakes are higher, and now that's when the abuse kicked in. And I believe the abuse kicked in because I well first I believe that she understood that if she had cycled around another time, that I was getting to the point where I was starting to pull away to that. Like okay, we've been through the cycle two or three times now. 
it, even though we're we're cool, we get along and this, that, and the third, it don't never end up nowhere. And I was starting to question too much that third time around, I, I guess because I had matured a lot between the second time and the third time. So I guess because I had leveled up and matured that I was expecting a little, a little bit too much from her at that time. So the third cycle, it was cool again. It was act, And once again, the love bomb got turned up even more so like i said the first time around it was cool we had a good time okay cool second time around the love bomb intensified the third time around it heightened even more and this time so the the first time it it, it all kind of went in stages so the first time i was just like okay she's a real cool friend somebody i can see myself potentially being with that that kind of thing but i was never in a rush for a relationship or any any of that kind of thing so i was like well i'll take my time and so i was cool with the with being friends because i wanted to take my time and the second time the love bomb intensified and i was like okay i like her a lot you know she's cool we hanging out we, we enjoying our time the stand the third okay cool the third time around is when i actually caught feelings for her and i actually like the first time that I could honestly say that <clears throat> I fell in love with her. And that's when she was pregnant with my son. So once she got pregnant with my son and I thought that that was my future, that's when, you know, um, I guess I had lowered my guards and I was willing to say, OK, cool. Now I have my person, like I have this person that she's pregnant with my child. Um, I have a good history with her. We've always been cool. We've always got along. She's attractive, you know, so I was thinking to myself like, okay, cool. I didn't, you know, finally found what my future is going to be. That's how I was thinking at that time. So I didn't realize that. The first two times that she disappeared were discards. I was just thinking like, you know, because she disguised it as things going on in life. Like people are busy. People got, you know, it, it's, you know, we live in a rat race. We live in this hustle and bustle lifestyle. And that lifestyle kind of sets us up for narcissism and, you know, failing at this as well. So that's just something that. I noticed in my own personal situation, and I wanted to share that with you guys because I feel like if you guys can spot it from the very beginning, like if y'all, if you are dealing with somebody and they cut you off, they ghost you out of nowhere, but the but the relationship was cool, y'all was cool as ten fans before that, like y'all was, you know, um, y'all was always on the phone, y'all was talking, y'all was laughing, y'all was joking, everything was cool, and then all of a sudden that person disappears. I'm not saying. That everybody, like I'm not saying that nobody um, has things come up in their life and they need to make adjustments, but ask questions because I didn't. I basically accepted her back twice without ever asking where she had been, who who she had been sleeping with, any of that kind of stuff because I didn't, I never saw her as that type of woman, I guess. And that's the whole thing is it was all an illusion. So because I never saw her as as trifling as she was, I let a lot of stuff go and I ended up cycling through twice when I would have uh, basically gotten off that carousel the very first time. And like I said, at first, when I went through the discard, I was like, no, I only, you know, I, I was only discarded once because most people only talk about the brutal discard or they talk about the final discard when everything was finally over. Nobody ever talks about the soft discard. So I just wanted to bring this video real quick and explain the soft discard to you because I've heard the discard explained a lot of different um, times and most people talk about the brutal discard because the brutal discard doesn't all, always mean that it's the final discard because a lot of us get hoovered back. Um, but so a lot of people talk about the brutal discard or they will, if they, if it is the final discard, then they will start to discuss the final discard. And 
you know, that's when they started waking up and realizing that they were dealing with a narcissist. The same as me. It's not like I didn't, I, I didn't know what I was dealing with the first time around. So like I said, the, she was able to get me back into that cycle twice without me realizing what was happening because she played it real cool and she never exposed, she never pulled the mask fully off. And I believe that when she was disappearing, it was because basically her cycle was on burnout with me. So I'm going to do another video on the cycles because matter of fact, I think I'm a, I don't know what I'm going to title that one yet, but I'm going to come back with another video for y'all soon. Um, shout out to the entire family. I love you guys. Thank you for continuing to rock with me. That is my video, and I will get back with y'all in a minute. Love you guys, and see y'all soon.